Hi folks again. Um, people seem to really enjoy the first one, so we figured we'd go ahead and do a second father offspring interview. And nicely, this time we uh, get to do it live because we're in the same place. Um, so there we, we want to add also a bit of a more formal opportunity for you all to submit questions for potential future interviews. So stay tuned for some info about how to do that uh, later in this video. Cool. Okay. All right. You ready? Okay. I see we're matching. You didn't <laughs> tell course. me this was going to happen. It's the uniform. Okay. It's the Sapolsky uniform. All right. Um, okay. We're going to start off with what is your ideal way to spend a weekend? Well, you know, uh, which is we're all up in the Sierras and we get up and your mother and brother and you and I, we go hiking with the dogs and it's great. And we go to some like waterfall or lake thing and have some great view and nobody gets ticks or leeches or anything. And we come back and we eat some sort of very spicy ethnic food. And then we play Settlers of Catan and all of you beat me for about the 4,000th time in a row. Yep, uh, that's, that's most, most of our ideal weekends do end with that. Um, okay, our next question is about another type of primate. Um, so do you think that large conflicts between rival baboon troops can be classified as a form of warfare? No. Okay. Because they don't have conflicts between troops of baboons. Um, okay, here's the deal. Baboons, they grow up, and if you're a male baboon, around puberty, you get unbelievably bored with all the other baboons in your group, and you get ants in the pants, and you get totally itchy, and you pick up and you transfer to another troop, the troop next door, a troop 60 miles away, whatever. You move there, and you start slowly working your way up in the hierarchy. In other words, in any given baboon troop, all of the adult males grew up someplace else. So they're not terribly cooperative. So they don't have epic battles with a troop across the river because they're too busy trying to slash each other's throats. In contrast, chimpanzees, it's the females who at puberty get completely bored and pick up and leave. So in any group of chimps, all the adult males are brothers and cousins and at least guys they've known for their whole lives and they work cooperatively. And they do these things called border patrols, where if they encounter a male from another group, they will kill him. This is organized premeditated violence. And at least in <coughs> two circumstances that have been documented, uh, the males have eradicated all the males in a neighboring group and expanded and took over their territory. This is like some sort of UN definition of genocide, killing an individual not for who they are, but solely for what group they belong to. So I think chimps come up with something that fits a lot of the same features of what we do. Okay, so um, one user has asked, what, what is his favorite food besides kibble? Um, I'm assuming this is for the dogs. Um, so what, what are the dogs' favorite foods? Well, the two of them, there's Safi, our golden retriever, who just lifted up his eyebrows when I said his name, showing exactly why we are willing to love these ex-wolves to bits, because he looks adorable. What does he, he loves to eat anything with starch or butter. And Kupenda, our Havanese, uh, is much more selective and mostly likes to eat carrots and cucumbers when not eating kibble. They have very non-overlapping tastes. That's about accurate. Um, you also like to eat carrots, so that's that runs in the family. Um, okay, next question is, do you think that there are any biological processes that influence disorders like somatoparaphrenia or others that Oliver Sacks' work talked about, or is it strictly psychiatric? All right, these are great. Somatoparaphrenia, somebody has a limb that's been paralyzed or whatever, and they develop a belief, a sincere belief, a psychotic belief that this limb no longer belongs to them. Whoa, what are they, crazy? Are we looking at a psychiatric disorder? Are we looking at a biological disorder? 
And as per usual, we have one of those dread false dichotomies between a biological level of something and a psychological level, and they're one and the same. And you see all sorts of great examples of this. Okay, in addition to that one, here's one. Capgrass delusion. Capgrass delusion is the best. Capgrass delusion, you believe and this is typically somebody who has just had a stroke or a car accident that's damaged their brain, um, you believe in the aftermath that your loved ones are not actually the, your loved ones. They are imposters. They are substitutes. They are professional actors. They're robots, some such thing. And you get people with capgrass will sit there and say, yeah, 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 I know this is my my beloved. Yeah, right. They got They got the... The birthmarks there just found that the freckles a little bit nice try guys I know and develop this whole paranoid ideation that their loved ones have been replaced in some sort of conspiracy way and it was originally at the beginning of the last century viewed as a psychiatric disorder or psychosis or delusion and then people began to figure out the neurobiology of it okay Visual information comes in your eyes, it gets processed in your visual cortex at the back there, and eventually it sends on information to your parietal cortex, which now begins to pull out, ah, I am looking at my loved one, sort of integrative information. And it turns out information like that goes from the visual cortex to the parietal in two separate streams. One stream is carrying like objective detailed information about the person's appearance, the person's face, all of that. The other stream is carrying their emotional connotations, the familiarity, all of that. And what you get is if they're stroke damage from the second stream, you see the person, they look exactly, but they don't feel like the person. And all you can do in the face of that sort of confusion is assume they've been replaced by a robot they've been replaced by an imposter it's just dealing with the fact that you know they look just but it's not really them conversely if you get damage in the visual recognition pathway sort of the nuts and bolts recognition but the familiarity pathway is still intact you get someone who absolutely does not recognize this. This is their love of their life for the last 80 years. Where they absolutely cannot recognize them. I've never seen this person before, but you know, I'm getting a good feeling about them for some reason. The emotional connotations are so two separable pieces of it and you damage one of them and you get a pretty strange disorder and it can look delusional, it could look psychological, it could look psychiatric, it could look neurobiological, one and the same. Right. So again, a, a sort of a nature versus nurture, this, as you said, sort of the false, false dichotomy of it's never just one of them. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we have time for one more question. We're going to go with a pretty important one here. Um, why do you look like you live under a bridge? Well, you know the answer, because we do. That's where we grew up, and we just have this uh, green screen false background here. Oh, I don't know. Left to my own devices, I am pretty bad on self-maintenance, and I will eat the same meal a thousand dinners in a row, and, like, if there's a t-shirt that I like, I'll just buy eight of them and I'll wear the, them in rotation for a decade or so. And so any ways in which I no longer look or act that way is thanks to you and your mother who among other things said there's no way I was sitting down for this unless I put on the shirt. <laughs> so that's why. Yes, and you really, really have no free will in that domain. Certainly not. Um, okay. That is all for this video. Okay. Um, as I said, um, stay tuned um, for a second. We'll give you a little bit more info about how you can formally submit questions for our future videos. Um, we're going to do our catchphrase. You ready? Okay. Um, and now we're matching, so it's even better. Um, I'm Offspring Sapolsky, and thank you for your continued support of science and the beard. Good night. 
If you have questions that you would like to see in future interviews, um, you can submit them at the link provided. So if you're on Instagram, it's gonna be in the bio or in the story highlight. And if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the video description below. And remember, this is your chance to ask all of your crazy questions you've always had about Professor Sapolsky. So have fun with it. And we can't wait to see your questions.